Yo, what's up guys? C Jax back with another video. And what do we have here? Another boring and pointless and nonsensical episode of SmackDown. Now, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is this week's episode of SmackDown, the go home show before Bash in Berlin, trash in Berlin. Sorry about that. Um, this go home episode of SmackDown was actually better than last week's episode of SmackDown. That's the good news. The bad news is, is that nothing that happened on this episode matters. And on top of that, nothing was really outstanding. Things were just better than last week. Doesn't mean it was amazing or great. It was just better than trash. So congratulations. We start off with what was the best segment of the night. LA Knight comes out and cuts a very, very solid promo, introducing his new challenger to the match or to the US title, the US title open challenge. And it ended up being Ludwig Kaiser, man. He got a nice pop from the hometown crowd. The crowd was great tonight on SmackDown, I have to say that. And him and Ludwig talked for a little bit on the mic. And then after that, they put on a very, very solid match besides the ending, which I thought was very abrupt and kind of rushed. And you could have dragged it out for a little like, extra minute or two and let Ludwig get in like a finisher move or a signature or something. And then LA Knight came out and do a bft and then you just end it but they just kind of abruptly finished it which you know whatever at the end of the day it was a good match uh good crowd ending was kind of mid and made no sense but it was a good match and the segment the promo LA Knight cut before was solid so this is a good portion of the show then after this you had a uh, jobberville which was pretty much baron corbin and apollo jobber versus the legato de fan jobber um First off, they changed the theme of Legato de Fantasma, which is good because their theme was trash. But either way, this match was just above average, if that. If that, that's kind of pushing. It was an average match, right? It's mid-level stuff. Um, Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews did a very solid job in this match. They both showed some offense. It was decent, but nobody cares about this match, let's be honest. So let's just move on, okay? It was as good as it can be. It's a bunch of jobbers. Um, then after this, I think we got, what, Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes. That's exactly what we got. Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes, and this is easily the low point of SmackDown tonight and what a surprise your wwe champion is again in your worst segment of the week on the show quickly i just want to flash up this graphic here this basically says that the wwe main event segment last week on smackdown where it was ko and cody versus a town down under lost over 400,000 viewers at its peak than the previous main event segment from the previous smackdown which was literally just roman reigns going out and grabbing the ula fala and then getting power bombed through a table there's multiple reasons for why this viewership dip happens and it's because of different things cody rose is a boring champion and he's uninteresting the second fact is that cody is uninteresting without the bloodline which we're going to get back to cody and the bloodline in a couple minutes of this video and then on top of that nobody cares about this kevin owens and cody rhodes feud it's boring it's not built up correctly and nobody cares about this because we know cody's going to come out on top within like 15 minutes of the match so it, none of this matters. And I'm not surprised about this. Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes come out here and basically Cody Rhodes, you know, glazes Kevin Owens for the first five minutes of the promo saying the usual stuff. Get ready for the imitations, y'all. I respect you. I like you. Thank you, Kevin Owens, for everything you've done. Uh, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> like, shut up, Cody. Just shut up. Like I always say, Cody Rhodes, amazing guy, but as champion, this dude is boring. All he does is come out here and basically tell Kevin Owens this, and this is actually kind of interesting. He actually says, you know, I left this company and walked the hard road and came back and won the title, and you know, now I'm at the top of the company, the North Star of the wrestling division, the WWE Championship. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? <laughs> he does out there and says that, and he was like, because I'm at the top now, you know, I had to leave you behind, and I'm like, he said that that made Kevin Owens angry because of that. And I'm like, when has Kevin Owens ever shown any sort of anger towards Cody Rhodes in the last two years he's been in the company? Like, what, what even is this segment? Cody Rhodes makes up stuff to try and build to this feud that has no good buildup at all. So he has to try and make things up to make this feud seem deeper than it really is. In reality, it's either one of two things. Kevin Owens is either going to turn heel after the match tomorrow at Bash in Berlin, or Trash in Berlin, or he's going to stay a good guy and then Cody's going to end up fighting solo for the WWE Championship. Those are really the only options for what's going to happen next at Bad Blood or on an episode of SmackDown coming up. That's really it, right? Kevin Owens is not mad at Cody Rhodes. They're basically, they're, they're literally just pandering to the crowd, doing all kinds of dumb stuff, and they're just trying to make up things to make this feud better. Kevin Owens has never been angry at Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is not the top star in the wrestling division or the wrestling industry, and the WWE Championship means nothing. So they're trying to make up this stupid feud with a credible opponent in Kevin Owens, who's been a jobber the last year or two, and they're trying to make it seem like these dudes have beef. They don't have beef. They're good friends. They're going to wrestle it out. Kevin Owens will either turn heel or Cody will end up fighting solo so that he can finally be interesting again. The only way Cody Rhodes can be interesting is if he's inside of a Bloodline-related story. We already know this. This isn't new information. 
So basically what's going to happen is this. Kevin Owens, after you know Cody Rhodes says, oh, you're angry because you're jealous of this and that, Kevin Owens starts talking about an alleged knee injury that Cody Rhodes has and that he got at a live event this week. I'm like, what does this even mean? They go from talking about his knee injury, which has nothing to do with anything, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if Cody's injured or not. He's going to win the match in like 15 minutes. But, I mean, Kevin Owens is a jobber. This dude hasn't beaten anyone. Who has he beat? He lost in a triple threat to, what, Rey Mysterio and AJ Styles earlier this year. Um, and then he lost to Logan Paul, who just came in the company like two years ago. Why in the world would I believe that this dude is going to beat Cody Rhodes? Like, it, it's just not believable. But you see, they try and do all these little, like, the, you know, these little tic-tac finishes, and these little tic-tac moments. Oh, this is so intense. Oh, you're jealous because I'm the top star, and I left the company and came back, and now look at me. Oh, oh, oh. Grow up. It's stupid. So this promo in this whole entire segment meant nothing. The only thing good about it was the fact that Michael Cole literally said, he was like, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, he's glad to be on SmackDown with a competent GM like Nick Aldis, unlike Adam Pearce. And that's absolutely facts. Adam Pearce is a terrible GM and he needs to be fired. Um, anyways, what happened after this? I think we got Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade Part 4, which I honestly like this gimmick now where Carmelo Hayes basically is like a, he does it like kind of an NBA series, right? So every single person he feuds with is probably going to be like a, Mel he's going to say Mellow in 7, so it's going to go to like 7 matches and it's a best out of 7 for that. That's pretty cool. Now, at the end of the day, we have seen Mellow and Andrade fight each other like what four times now and it is kind of getting old but the match quality each time has been at least like a seven out of ten or better so therefore Melo versus andrade is passable if you're going to give me a guaranteed match that's going to at least be above average or solid each week then obviously i'm going to be okay with that all right i'm not mad at it it's just i'm kind of getting tired of it we need to add in a stipulation like no holes barred or extreme rules or a tables match or something we need to start adding weapons into this we're four matches deep they're probably going to do three or four more like we just need to go ahead and get to the point where these guys actually fight it out and you know and, and have some extra stipulations involved you get what i'm saying so i think that's really what needs to happen uh, but yeah this is cool i mean it is what it is we've seen it four times i mean this is good but you know we'll just see what happens next with this um then after this what happened uh we got uh, uh another terrible segment as well with um backstage with waller and theory and uh and what's their names man baron corbin and apollo cruz Nobody cares about this. You know, I don't even know why I brought that up in the first place. I'm actually sorry for wasting your time with that because <laughs> no one cares. Uh, then after this, we got Nia Jax versus Meechin in a street fight for the WWE Women's Championship. And this match was actually pretty decent. Um, there were some table spots in there. Nia Jax got powerbombed through a table. Um, Meechin got no reaction when she went out to the crowd, but what else is new? And then... Oh, yeah, Tiffany Stratton uh, was out there, too. She fake cashed in her money in the bank. And then... We got the return of Bailey after what, like three or four weeks or something like that. Bailey came back. Um, she was, you know, running down the ramp, <laughs> which she ran a little bit weird, but anyways, doesn't really matter. Um, she came down to the ring and pretty much just started attacking Tiffany Stratton and helping out Meechin. And then Meechin ended up getting absolutely demolished on a trash can for with, with Nia Jax hit her with the Annihilator. And then that was pretty much the end of the match. It was decent. It had decent spots. Um, it was a little bit slow in other parts, but overall, this is expected. I mean, it's Meechin versus Nia Jax. How good of a match are you expecting? This is about as good as this could have been, really. There's nothing else that really could have happened. But the problem with this match is the fact that Nia Jax is supposed to be this unstoppable, you know, big-time threat, but then just like the match at SummerSlam, she wouldn't have won necessarily without Tiffany Stratton, and I just think that really makes her look a lot weaker than what she really should be portrayed as, which is an absolute monster who should be beating a jobber like Meechin in about four minutes max. You get what I'm saying? Thing. so but other than that that was pretty much it for smackdown there was like four matches and there was that one very boring and drawn out segment with cody and ko and you know randy orton's promo on monday night talking about what the world title means to him and how important it is that was boring and drawn out too but at least it did something it made the world heavyweight championship seem a little bit more important like at least it did something this promo with cody and ko just did nothing and then that was pretty much smackdown bro um quick easy and the one benefit that smackdown has over raw is the fact that even though both Raw and SmackDown week to week are usually like around the 5 out of 10 or 4 out of 10 level, in my personal opinion, like they're pretty bad usually, I'm not going to lie, or mediocre, um, at least SmackDown's two hours. And most of it is ads because that's all Raw and SmackDown is now. You get 30% wrestling and 70% advertisements. So SmackDown is pretty much done quickly. It runs, it's done at like an hour and 57 minutes, and then like an hour of that is just ads. So I mean, you're pretty much done and out the door quickly. You watch your garbage and you move on, right? With Raw, it's a three-hour long, drawn-out garbage fest of job and just jobberville all over you you know what i mean 
but at least here, you know, you at least can get done in two hours and just move on. You know, you're done before 10 p.m. You can kind of just move on, get rest or whatever. So SmackDown wasn't good, but this is expected. Trash at Berlin is going to be just like the name says it's going to be trash. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. So I uh, hope you guys had a phenomenal day. I hope you enjoyed this episode of SmackDown. And as always, be prepared for tomorrow because I will be reviewing Clash at the, or not Clash at the Castle, uh, Trash in Berlin. I will be reviewing it tomorrow. Some point in the afternoon, I should have a review up and a recap up for that garbage PLE because we know what's coming. Okay, let's not be, <laughs> let's not pretend. We know that PLE is not going to be good. I'd be shocked if it's anything above a 5 or a 6 out of 10 max. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow and uh, hope everyone has a great day. Peace out.